If you've been using FEA for some time, you've been subject to staring at some colorful charts before. These plots are directly responsible for how we understand some of the given results in FEA, so here are some of the top tricks I think you need to master to become good at FEA analysis inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation. The first thing I see users doing with simulation that they probably should fix is the unit scale. I usually change my chart globally to include the scale of the units that most designers are used to seeing. I can go to Simulation, Options, Default Options, and change my units. I usually go to Megapascals or PSI. Then you go down to Color Chart, click Floating and three decimal places to set the units to a more normalized scale that most users are used to seeing. Are you or a coworker colorblind? There's actually a setting for this here as well. If you find yourself creating the same type of plot over and over again, such as a factor of safety plot, then you can add it to the default study type here, and from now on when you create a new simulation study, this plot will come in automatically so you don't have to create it every time. Have you ever opened a chart that was already created and someone had poor unit selection? You can right click on that plot and click edit definition to select the units and then tab over to the chart options to select floating in three decimal places to change this locally. Another option that is important in helping you determine certain results is the specify color for values above yield option. This will help you determine areas in the part that are experiencing failure from a glance and help determine scale of the problem. You can also modify and scale the chart accordingly by turning off the automatic settings for the chart and setting your own. If you've ever wanted to actually scale your results in an assembly to a singular part, you can define a new plot by right-clicking results and creating a new plot. I usually create one for each new individual part of interest in my assembly. Under the advanced options for this plot, I can show the values on selected entities which include faces or bodies. You can select multiples of each if desired. From there, an important step is to tab over to the chart options and check on the show min-max range on selected entities only so that you can see the distribution across just the visible parts in the plot. This will help you isolate stress concentrations in an individual part. Sometimes when you're in an exploded view, the assembly displays differently than you would expect. If you click the deformed result button on and off, it will update the plot for the assembly. Sometimes you can also do this by traveling from the model tab back to the study tab and it will update the graphics as well. 